Rick Neuheisel, Pac-12 Network Analyst, and uh, he can be seen Tuesday at 10 Pacific on the uh, Pac-12 Football Weekly covering the latest college football playoff rankings. Always great when he brings his guitar and brings us a song, and Rick joins us now. The UCLA legend, Rick Neuheisel. Hi, Coach. Dan, how are you? Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. Did you celebrate the UCLA win over USC? Absolutely. How? You know, I have a son on the team. Well, I, you know, I, I look next to Curtis Conway of Trojan lore and said, take that. <laughs> That's what you do. You know, it's, it's all about uh, the, the rubbing it in to those who uh, live right next to you. It's, it's a city uh, divided on that particular day, as you know. Yeah, but By the way, don't you have a child at USC? Yes. How did he celebrate on that particular day? Uh, she. Or she. Yeah. Uh, my, actually, my boys have met her. Says she's kind of hot. Do you get that a lot? Well, she looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> Do your boys think I'm hot? <laughs> yeah, you're, my boys clearly now think you're hot, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, my daughter, uh, yeah, my daughters get that. But be careful, coach. All right. I'm, I'm on slippery ice right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm moving away. Let's talk more Pac-12 ball. But here. did you talk trash with USC fans or you just? No, 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 no. No, they, 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 I'm just saying Curtis Conway and I had a friendly little, uh, you know, jest back and forth. That's all. That's all. Okay. So I'm stuck in my little, uh, my little <laughs> touchdown room with eight television screens, and so Curtis and I get to talk a little trash. Wait, you didn't go to forth. the game? No, no. I'm in the studio. Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I didn't know you were working, so, yeah. You all know, right. I follow you. you know, I, I watch what you do on Sunday nights, and I try to emulate. You know what you bring to the national television audience. How could I help you? Well, I you know I think you know I'm going to have to come to your camp. <laughs> There's no question. Like the Manning passing camp. Exactly. I'm, I'm I think my... <laughs> you should have the DP broadcasting camp. No question about it. I would love to do it. I really, I'm in. I'm I really be, would. I'll be the first guy to sign up. Because I don't know if I can do it, but I know what I should be doing, and uh, also with <laughs> analysts to be able to uh, to help them. So there is an entire country out there that thinks you do it just fine. Well, thank you, Rick. Thank you. The uh, final four tonight will be in what order? Oh, I think it's going to be Alabama, uh, Oregon, Florida State, and Mississippi State. I think it'll be uh, exactly where it was. They'll hold chalk. But that doesn't matter. What really is the interesting thing tonight will be five, six, and seven. Those just on the outside looking in and how they arrange TCU, Ohio State, and Baylor. Will it be in that order as it was last week, or will Baylor finally get uh, some credit for their head-to-head victory over TCU? Will the committee continue to think Ohio State's that sexy pick and keep moving them up? Uh, it, those, those are the real questions. And, and then, you know, UCLA and Georgia, they're the two lost teams that have some hope of uh, making it. I, I know that we do this in week in and week out. It's made for TV, and this is part of what ESPN ponied the money up for. But sure. we're, we're talking about strength of schedule, quality opponents. And if I beat a, a body co- of work is my favorite. <laughs> yeah. But, Rick, if I beat a good team in week four and then they're not in the top 25 by week eight, then it's not a quality win. At the time, it may have been, but maybe they got it wrong in how they rank them. And then they're out of the top 25. Don't you have to wait? Like, at at the end of the season, you're going to know if you had quality wins or not. Your body of work, is Minnesota actually going to be a quality win? Is Ole Miss, is Arkansas, you know, like, what are these teams that are sort of on the periphery? They may, may be the ones deciding who gets into that fourth spot. Well, I think you're bringing up a great point. In, you know, there's the hangover effect. A team, you know, I'll use Oklahoma as an example. A team that's sitting there fighting for their playoff lives, trying to get to the Final Four, that takes one on the chin. Think about Oklahoma and TCU. And TCU beats them, so Oklahoma thinks their, day, their days are numbered with respect to their chances. And then they go out and completely lay an egg, you know, get walloped by, by Baylor. You know, to me, is, did Baylor play the same team that TCU played? Uh, we saw Notre Dame have the, the, the hangover after losing to Florida State. You know, the, their chances for a Final Four appearance, now they've lost three in a row. 
those kind of things, I think the the committee has to say, you know what, I'm not taking away from the team that beat them. That was a quality win when they won because I watched the game. But that team has fallen on, on hard times now because the motivation isn't the same when they're playing. So those are tough decisions for the committee. Ultimately, this is going to go on your eyeball test. We knew it was going to be subjective. We just hopefully have the right 12 people there uh, making the choices. But I, shouldn't Alabama be docked by playing Western Carolina this late in the season? I mean, well, that's I've opponent. made a, uh, I've made that point before. The entire league, and and I and I credit. I don't I don't discourage. I credit Mike Slive and the SEC because we all know that losses late are more damaging than losses early. And if you're going to put one of those games, you're going to play those games. The the FCS opponents, and by the way, the SEC with 14 teams. Uh, you know, played seven of them in the month of November. Every team in the uh, SEC played an FCS opponent. But uh, seven of those games were in the month of November, and to me that's just smart scheduling. I know it, 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 we've, we're paying more attention to it this year because yeah. we've got this, this frenzy for the Final Four, but uh, there's no question that uh, while playing Western Carolina or, or uh, playing Samford or Eastern Kentucky, whichever the teams were, mm-hmm. uh, South Alabama, th- those, those games were, were uh, helpful to the teams that, uh, in the SEC. Yeah, I wouldn't have Mississippi State at number four. I, I just. Where do you have them? They're on the outside looking They're in. They're on the outside looking in. Well, you and I see the world the same way. I'm saying you asked what the committee would do. Yeah. 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 I, I don't think they'll be there at day's end. I think, you know, they keep telling us, hey, look, at when you win a conference title, you get an extra bump. And, and uh, so to me, that the, the, the Big 12 has to decide which is their conference champion. Uh, can I take a break and have you come back and uh, perform your song? Would you, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? you I mean, you're, you're teasing the, this. You, you have the camp. I'm the guy who you know, paid the, the freight to come to your camp. I'll but, do whatever you say. All right, we're gonna, this is called a tease. I'm going to tease <laughs> the Rick Neuheisel song, and that'll be coming up next, Dan Patrick Show. He gave us Born in the SEC, the Ballad of Johnny Manziel, just some of the greats. He's sort of our One Direction. He's Rick Neuheisel, the UCLA legend, Pac-12 Network analyst, and today's song is what, Rick? We call it I Don't Know. Basically, the lament of our 12 committee members as they sit in Grapevine, Texas, trying to figure out who they should give us as their final four. Sung to the tune, Dan, of Jimmy Buffett's Volcano. All right, here we go. Rick Neuheisel. I'm going to choose who the hell should go. Archie Manning's on the shelf. Football committee is down to 12. Becoming much harder to make our picks. Who's the next to call in sick? Come the best from one week to the next Who the hell should go Hotel food is getting rough Clearly we're not paid enough Speaker Jeff Long says don't be stressed When in doubt pick from the SEC West I'll go insane if someone else complains who the hell should go. Trips to Dallas getting long. Condi Rice says something's wrong. She's met with world leaders on the brink of doom. None of them send flowers to her room. I'm going 
gonna go with the final four. Well, I think it has to be he, Alabama. They put the Bulldogs on the bricks. What if they lose again to War Eagle? What if we have to watch another kick six? I think we have to love the Seminole Nation and their quarterback, Jameis Winston. He's not an expert on public speaking, but he has found every way to win. We've got to look west to the Pac-12. The Oregon Ducks will fit just right. The whole country loves their West Coast football, just like Pat Aiden loves Lindale White. Can't forget the mighty Big 12. Frogs and bears, they both have game. But how about a league that says one true champion, then gives us two, now that's a shame. Buckeye Nation screams, don't forget us. We just mopped up a Michigan State. Never mind that Bartek nightmare. JT Bear never stays up that late. Hey, I don't know. I don't know. He's a win or lose, which ones I'm going to choose, who the hell should go. Sing it with me, I don't know. I don't know. I know it will be great when we go from four to eight so I can go home. He's done it again. He's done it again. You know when you when you work in Lendale White in there, I mean, you, you, you've done, that was for you. You've, in you've done your job there. Uh, hey, great to uh, great to have you drop another song here as always. Always fun to be with you, my friend. And right. I, I truly uh, big happy Thanksgiving to you right. and to all of those who listen to your great show. Uh, maybe I'll uh, run into you when I go out and do Sports Jeopardy uh, in January. I'll be out. Please do it uh, and bring your clubs. Do you want to be uh, maybe a celebrity who does some celebrity clues on Jeopardy? How would I ever say no to that? Okay. Of course I do. All right. I mean, we obviously are going to have to put the word celebrity in, <laughs> in air quotes or something like that. But, uh, yes, I'm in. What would be your go-to category? What do you know uh, the most about sports-wise? Fame, uh, how about let's go to uh, old, old numbers, the numbers of old players. Okay. That would, you know, like what, what, what number did Connie Hawkins wear? 42. See, that's what you're good at this. You you would have to work that into question form, but okay. other than that, you were perfect right there. Okay. What was forty two? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh Burt Reynolds in longest yard. What was twenty two? Yes. Yeah. What is correct? What is That is correct. That is correct. That is correct. All right, we'll uh, we'll work on this. Paul Crew. Paul Crew, absolutely. There you have it. All right. All right, my friend. All right, Rick. Talk to you soon. And tell your boys, stay away from my daughter, okay? You got it. All you right, got thank it. Thank you. It's Rick Neuheisel, former UCLA head coach, Pac-12 Network analyst.